This is obviously a library and was built to be such, but when you think of a library in the 18th century, it wasn't deemed to be a full library until it had collections as well as the books. And our founder, Archbishop Richard Robinson, was most generous to the library because he actually gave his collections of gem, print, coins, medals to the library for the public of, of Armagh and beyond to, to enjoy. So in the cabinet behind me, we have our gem collection. So it's interesting when you hear the word gem, you might think of precious stones or diamonds, but I'd be interested to show you what the gems actually are. So these are our 18th century gems. They're actually made of a wax material and they were made by a Scottish engraver called James Tassie. They were called gems because they're actually impressions of precious gems. So you wouldn't have the precious gem itself, but you would have an engraving of it. And they were collected just as people collect stamps or coins. There was no practical use as such, but it was very interesting for a gentleman of the time to be able to show people, this is my collection. What I think is unusual about the gems is the things that they depict. They depict things like Greek and Roman gods and goddesses. But we actually found recently that there is a Christian link. So some of the gems show the Last Supper and one shows Jonah and the Whale. And what's interesting about that one is that it is the smallest gem that we have where the Medusa gem is really quite striking and quite large. What I love about the Medusa gem is it's obviously quite striking and when we would have young children in, that's something that really speaks to them. We would say, do you know the story of the lady who had snakes for hair? And they would all shout Medusa and then we'd, we'd be able to show them and show them how precious the gem really is. They were Richard Robinson's own personal collection and we have over 4,000 of them. And we're quite fortunate that Robinson seemed to be really interested in having this collection and was very generous in donating this to the library. One of our most famous books that we have in here is actually the copy of Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. It's well known that we have it. It was published in 1726. And while there are other books of that era and that edition, this one's rather special because it was Swift's own copy. The reason we know that it's definitely Swift's copy is we can see his handwriting. What had happened was his publisher, Benjamin Mott, produced the work. The first that Swift knew was when he started to read his freshly published work, only to find that the publisher had changed some words. Words that he did not want in, he had not expected in. So in this very copy that we have, you can see Swift having scored out the words that he had not put in in the first place in his manuscript. And he's written in the margin, the word or words that he has wanted. I have this image of Swift settling down with a glass of claret to read his freshly published work and beginning to think, I didn't have that word there. I didn't place that phrase there. Oh, that word has completely changed the meaning of that. That paragraph and growing angrier and angrier and you can even see that at the start you can see where words have one strike through but as you work on through the work you can see two and three strike out so you imagine he was very angry and it leads us all to wonder now why was that changed why did the publisher make that change he wouldn't have done it lightly he did it because he was obviously worried he knew that swift must have been attacking people of importance of the day um, and and we know then that there was this great discussion what did it mean so that is often the reason why people will come to visit here at number five vickers hill which is just two minutes walk from the library in a nutshell, what we have here are items apart from books that you'll find in the library, but they're all from the library collection. We have early pre-Christian artefacts like uh, Celtic uh, weapons, uh, tools, brooches, etc. Um, we also have prints, and we also have early church bells and bell holders. It's a wonderful taster for what we have in the library, and it's a great opportunity for the public to see it all. Well, our stone, the Ogham stone, as you can see, it's the earliest form of Irish writing. And it works on a line with notches along it. You can actually see in our diagram here how the alphabet works with it. And any visitors coming here can actually take away their own copy of that. And you see play games like James Bond send each other messages in code. This stone is the only one on public display in County Armagh and you can see there's a chip on it which may have been one of the reasons why it came into our care because in 1870 
The farmer who knew it was a precious stone, he donated it to the library. And for quite a while, it was too weary for the nice wooden floor on the first floor of the library, so it was actually stored since this place was opened. It's a pride of place in public display and a great attraction for visitors. And we always say to visitors, it's uh, a lucky stone. You can touch it for good luck if you wish. It certainly brought me good luck. This year, the library is 250 years old. So we've got wonderful collections on medicine, science, astronomy, a whole range of subjects. We very much hope that we will welcome visitors once again. And to do that for both our buildings, um, we would ask you to contact the library. You can go to our website and then see where our email address is or our telephone number. And we'd welcome hearing from you to plan your visits.